Good morning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is Kanye West for those that don't know. Silent Mike, ladies and gentlemen. Back with another video today. We're talking about powerlifting versus bodybuilding. Powerlifting, new evidence. What the evidence-based community is saying. What some of this data and science is saying. And maybe what little old Mikey thinks and is saying. And maybe we can teach you how to not only be your strongest, but your biggest, baddest self. Um, all kind of depend on your goals, whether you want to build muscle, get jacked, or build strength. They aren't necessarily the same. So if you want to get involved, stick around. Be sure to subscribe. Turn on notifications, please. It helps every Monday and Wednesday. Brand new videos. I see that like 50% of y'all aren't subbed. I also see that, you know, a lot of y'all aren't watching the videos. So if you tweet this out, I'm going to retweet you. If you post it on Instagram, I'm going to repost you. You help me, I scratch at your back, you scratch at my back. We build this thing together. I appreciate all the support this year. We're going in. First things first, I'm the realist. Everyone's saying, Mike, this is administrative work. We got to get out the way. We're streaming right now, probably. 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Wednesday. Come kick it. It is absolutely amazing on the Twitch community. You get to ask me anything, hang out, and we literally just get to build community, play games, and talk shit. But a couple of things been coming on my mind. Everyone's saying, Mike, you live in California. Why are you wearing a beanie? Do you live in a freezer? There's no snow in sunny California. Why are you so cold in the gym? Ladies and gentlemen, for those that don't know, I, I don't know why I get pet peeved by a little bit of, uh, just a little geography. I don't expect you to know where every single capital of every single state, country, and province is, but just knowing generally that California is really fucking big, fucking big, would be a good start. Uh, San Diego is very close to Mexico, which is close to the equator. Me, I'm about nine hours north of that, which is starting to head up towards Canada. There's also these things called the Sierra Nevadas, a very large mountain range that runs on the edge of California. I am less than half an hour from the base of that. I am in a valley, so our summers get quite hot up here in Northern California, but we also have held the Winter Olympics in Northern California. On top of that, your boys chilling here from about 5.45, 5.30 in the morning a.m. Uh, until the afternoon. So it is a little bit chilly. Two, I look real good in a beating. Why are you complaining? Hopping into the video. So strength and hypertrophy. Um, there's a lot of, you know, many arguments or many, and some may say it's on semantics, but the truth is that it does help build how we program or how we may train for optimizing our muscle gain. And we all know kind of a calorie surplus helps, uh, adequate protein helps spread out throughout the day, uh, and consistency. Now, it used to kind of be the nomer, and I've probably been guilty of saying this too, that volume is the main driver of both. And I do think that volume is a main aspect of both still in terms of hypertrophy and or strength. So power building, if you will. But I don't think it's the only factor and I think you can split up volume a million ways, right? 10 sets of one, uh, slightly different than one set of 10. But what is shown uh, and kind of is sitting around this thing of, you know, the, the, the argument of building muscle is that the rep range maybe isn't as important as we used to think, you know, especially 80s, 90s, everyone said, we gotta train in the 15 rep range to build muscle and the three rep range to build strength. But the truth is, and what I believe to be true, uh, and how I program all my hypertrophy and aesthetic building muscle is how close to failure we get, which is also a term called intensity, but I literally mean going towards failure. So the closer to failure on a movement or a muscle or body part you get, the more stimulus we get for that hypertrophy, right? The other big difference in the powerlifting versus bodybuilding conversation is exercise variation and exercise selection. And powerlifting, you're going to have to use a barbell. Uh, even in strength, I would argue that a barbell is going to be your first tool. You don't have to use it because strength is relative to the function you want to do, right? A football player might not be able to bench much, but that guy's very strong and will shove you 50 yards down the field in O lineman. But a barbell allows you to load the most amount of weight properly. That's why it's powerlifting. You do the three lifts that you can move the most amount of weight. And if you come to me like, Mike, I overhead more than I bench. I don't care, Johnny. Sit down in the back of class before I send you to the principal because that's probably because you don't bench often or you bench like sh shit and you're the anomaly. You're not the majority. So most people will squat bench dead more weight than they will any other lift. Again, but if building pecs are the number one goal or is the number one goal, 
and bench press doesn't feel good on your shoulders or maybe your tricep or maybe you don't feel the activation in your chest, you can build the nastiest physique in the world never touching a barbell. You can get close to failure, train to failure on uh, flies, machines, dumbbells, plate loaded, cables, shit, maybe even push-ups. Um, again, the variation can vary depending on what feels best for you and what you can activate that muscle with best. Where in powerlifting, we're going to have to squat bench dead. And because of the law of specificity and what I highly recommend is you're gonna to have to do those competition variants, the ones that work best for you, heavy and often. Um, now, again, it goes for any body part. You don't have to deadlift to be the world's best bodybuilder. Uh, can it build a lot of muscle? Yeah, I think the deadlift's a great tool to build a lot of muscle in a lot of areas, but you don't necessarily have to. Now, if we're trying to mix both, that's when things maybe get a little bit hairy because we want to train heavy with high intensities in the 80-90% to build the skill and the stimulus and the motor recruitment to get stronger in those movements and practice lifting heavy if you only handle 40% on your squat and you start to load up 90, 100%, uh, mentally and physically, you're not gonna be prepared for that, right? We wanna train specifically. So practicing singles around RPE eight or nine fairly frequently is going to be a really good tool if your form is fairly good. Uh, and I know I just said fairly a lot because I'm fairly certain that I'm correct. What I tend to do, if the power building, and all of us, I think even most power lifters know that accessories and building more muscle tends to have more potential to be stronger. So building muscle, um, not only for perhaps injury prevention, but also just leverages and overall strength is a good option, is I tend to get closer to failure on those uh, isolation or the smaller muscles, right? The smaller muscles and isolation is gonna take less general fatigue uh, and less CNS fatigue even though you're going to failure, than if I, was, I would, if I was going to do a squat to failure. Doing a bicep or preacher curl at the end of a couple sessions a week, uh, I can get a lot of hypertrophic response to my biceps without absolutely blowing my load and not be able to move around the next day. Whereas if you're squatting to absolute failure multiple times a week, chances are uh, you're going to regress. You're gonna go backwards, not only um, in how you feel, but the weight you move. And if strength is anything to you or performance, right? Strength athletes, powerlifters, strongman weightlifters, you're in a performance athlete. Um, and so that's gonna go backwards. So we have to make progress with those. So we kind of front load our workouts, our programming with exercises that truly matter to us and our performance, handling RPE eights and nines, still getting adequate volume to get practice of the lift and build some hypertrophy, right? We don't have to go to absolute failure to build muscle. It just might be more optimal. Uh, and then we'll kind of on the back load, we'll get those smaller movements, the accessories, uh, and train those a little bit closer to failure. I think frequency is gonna be very important for all lifts uh, and all goals. So if we can train our biceps to failure three times a week versus doing it once a week, you're probably gonna build more muscle if your sleep, hydration, and nutrition is all uh, good. The last piece with kind of the evidence base is how fatigue, uh, general CNS fatigue accumulates, and it used to be and still talked about in the powerlifting world that training too heavy too often burns that fatigue um, and your CNS is tired and burnt and everyone talking about but the, what the data looks like it's showing us is that actually training more reps, more volume closer to failure actually burns you out more than training heavy. So singles, doubles, triples don't uh, burn out your CNS or, or the general fatigue as bad um, or as much or as long as if you are doing Again, squats, sets of 10, 15, close to failure, deadlifts, high reps, bench high reps, whatever exercise, higher reps, more volume will burn you out longer term. And that's just kind of how I trained. You know, I take kind of the Bulgarian-ish method where they're handling a lot of specificity in the strength movements, singles, heavy, very often. Um, and then I mix in whether you want to call it bodybuilding um, or more Russian style training where the uh, strength movements, I'm going a little bit higher sets, lower reps, still to practice that skill of being perfect, being a machine, being a routine. If you watched our past videos, I talk a lot about that, building the routine of the lift. And then we start to get into sets of six, eight, 12, 14, 
routine with a more isolation exercise, whether that be biceps, triceps, shoulders, even a little hamstring top off on a lower day or sprinkled throughout the week to bring up those quote unquote weak points or build more muscles um, in, in areas that we may lack from the big three. I know that's a ton of info I just threw at you and how do you piece it together? And the question, the answer is it's very difficult and that's why good coaches are hard to come by and it takes a lot of experience and learning. And that's why I've also said that I'm not the greatest at like teaching programming, but I can break down one piece and give you a tool of that. So that's something to consider when you program. We talked about in the last video or a couple videos ago about variations and when to implement those. So I'd also grab that and that's a piece in your toolbox. And you accumulate all these tools, you see your athlete or yourself or the situation, and you start to apply these tools as needed. Oh, here's a nail, I need a hammer. Here's a screw, I need a screwdriver. Rather than just having one tool and trying to apply it to all situations or all athletes. Um, that's it for me. Um, I'm going to start to jack up my power building as I've just kind of getting my base back here, training two or three times a week with the barbell mostly. I've done some accessories, but nothing crazy. Uh, now I'm splitting it up very similar to one of our power building programs at Kaizen, where I'm gonna hit my barbell days three times a week, uh, squatting three times, benching three times, deadlifting twice, and then on the off days, I'm gonna try to come in, get a little bit of shoulders, back, and biceps. Uh, the volume will be low, frequency will be high two to three times a week, but I'll just do one or two sets pretty close to failure, try to bang it out, and slowly progress in weight and volume over time. So handling more weight in that bicep curl to volume um, will allow me to progress, and then also, getting more sets in throughout the week, throughout the workout will allow me to progress over time. I appreciate you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I catch you on Twitch, man. Come in, say YouTube sent me. Uh, I'd love to hang out. Love to get you guys, get to know you better um, and have some good times over there. So I appreciate your new podcast every Wednesday. Sound the mic. Clothing coming through soon. Uh, 3sb.co, stay tuned, or Third Street Barbell on Instagram. Follow that for updates on the gym and clothing. I'm out of here.